You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Reflecting on a tragedy that has changed lives in Atlanta, how Northside Medical Midtown hopes you'll help lift up the victims. Right now, the community is preparing for a day of reflection nearly two days after the deadly active shooting in Northside Midtown Medical Center. It comes as we are learning more about the four victims that are still recovering this morning and also the one woman who was killed. Ariana Beniz has the latest. It's a day of reflection and recovery. Less than 24 hours ago, Grady's chief medical officer, Dr. Jansen, says the four women who were shot here at Northside Medical Hospital, they continue to recover. Three remain in critical condition. And the fifth victim, Amy St. Pierre, the one who died here at the hospital, her family is remembering her as the best of the best. The 39-year-old was an employee with the CDC and even helped establish their maternal mortality team. Her colleague said she loved her family dearly. She loved her two young kids and was also very passionate about her work and her team at the CDC. Now today, Northside Medical Hospital, they're asking everyone to take a moment to pause and remember those victims as well as remember their families. Back to you. Thank you, Ariana. This morning, we are waiting to hear when the accused shooter, Dion Patterson, will be back in court. He waived his first court appearance scheduled for Thursday. Police tell us Patterson is not cooperating in the investigation. The question so many are trying to understand is why did this happen? Within hours of the shooting, Patterson's family was pointing to mental illness. So we turned to a mental health expert and a counselor for some insight. They emphasize that people should not automatically link evil behavior to mental illness. The impulse for people to think that any sort of severe, tragic, almost unbelievable incident is related to mental illness. I do feel like something has got to change and we cannot scapegoat really anything. If it is a mental health issue, where are the resources? They say it's important to look at societal drivers when we're talking about preventing these horrific events. They both brought up the issue of gun availability in our country. We've been tracking this investigation every step of the way for you, and we'll bring you each new development here and on 11alive.com. That was a look at your Friday morning headlines. Heading out the door for your kickoff to the weekend, Chesley McNeil. Yeah, you're looking at clouds to start off this uh, morning, and we'll have some ch a chance for rain as we head through the weekend. In fact, through the weekend and into next week. Uh, right now, what you see, it's entering into our state, really not reaching the ground. I just looked at the Rome camera there to see if we saw any raindrops at all. I haven't seen any. So a lot of this probably not making it into the ground, but eventually it will. It'll saturate the upper levels, and then eventually we'll make it all the way down to the surface. So we're looking at temperatures starting off a little bit milder this morning than we have been, thanks to the cloud cover. We're in the 50s in a lot of spots. Yesterday, we started out uh, uh, the same the same time in the 40s and 30s out there. You do have some 40s mixed in, but for the most part, you're going to see 50s. For example, over towards Stockbridge, you're at 54, 49 degrees right now in Conyers, 54 degrees in Fayetteville, 52 over toward Noonan, 51 Chattahoochee Hills, 55 Marietta, Powder Springs at 51, Hiram the same, 50 right now in Dallas over there in Paulding County. Tucker, you're at 56, 53 degrees at the Fulton County Airport at the current hour. You want to wear forecast calls for... Uh, and, well, you can get away to long sleeves today, I think, as well. As temperatures will be in the low 70s. Yesterday we had up at 75, felt pretty good. I, I, I did hear somebody say it was hot yesterday. I was thinking, not yet, not yet. You know how it gets around here. 30% chance for a scattered or isolated shower, especially as we head toward the afternoon. A couple of thunderstorms you can see pushing into Jackson, Mississippi, uh, almost down into New Orleans. I think the thunderstorms will remain down to the south of us today. In fact, that is where we have the threat for severe weather. That dark green shade means a level one threat or a marginal risk for severe weather. This light green shade that approaches our area. Well, it just means a general threat for a thunderstorm. I don't think we'll see it today at all. Maybe tomorrow we'll get a clap of thunder in very early. See the light green stays over us. Even as we head into Sunday, that marginal risk not moving any further toward the east. So uh, we're not anticipating much in the way of any severe weather, but we will have the wet weather around. Here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with me with the time right there at the top of the screen. It shows, again, that rain pushing in. Uh, isolated to scattered showers around. Not everyone gets wet. It's only a 30% chance, but we'll hold on to that threat right on through the overnight going into Saturday morning. Morning. I think we'll have the rain around at least through early afternoon before it begins to subside. Maybe even a few breaks in the clouds here and there. And that's going to boost that temperature up a bit as well as we head into the weekend.
Despite the clouds around on Sunday, uh, I think we'll get a break during the afternoon. There's a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or two. We will see a little bit of sun and the rain. Again, those temperatures will be going up because of that. We'll see temperatures approaching 80 by Saturday, Sunday 83, and we're going to hold on to those 80s as we head into next week. In fact, by the middle of the week, upper 80s, 87 on Wednesday with a slight chance for showers. Right now, police are investigating a shooting at a Cobb County Park that left a high school student hurt. This morning, police say that shooting was targeted. It happened at Nickajack Park less than 24 hours ago. Police say several students from area high schools were hanging out when the shooting happened. Today, a memorial service will honor the life of a missing business owner whose remains were recently found. Jason Salter and his friend and business partner, Kenny Guerra, were last seen alive in late February. Police say Salter's remains were found in March with another body, but that person has not been identified. Salter's family and loved ones will gather at the Light of Joy Church in Riverdale to remember him. That service begins at noon. We finally know Georgia's new presidential primary date is now set for March 12th, 2024. The new date will give Georgia voters two weeks of early voting prior to Super Tuesday. Flavor packets can add a little bit of a boost to your water. They've been around for a while, but there is a new trend on social media where people are giving it a little bit of a remix. Welcome to the side of TikTok where people are throwing in everything but the kitchen sink in their H2O. The category is called Water Talk. That's where you find people mixing multiple of these sugar-free flavor packets along with sugar-free syrup. The trend is kind of controversial. So, in addition to that, does this defeat the purpose of actually drinking water? So we talked to our medical expert to see if it's safe for you to add all this mixing, if it's still beneficial. Reading the ingredients of a lot of these flavoring packets, adding artificial sweeteners or sugar or mixing the flavor packets together should be safe. You just heard from Dr. Sujatha Reddy, who says if mixing the flavors is what you need to do to get your water in, then it's safe to do so. However, you will want to make sure the ingredients are as natural as possible. If the idea of drinking water is to avoid things like, um, let's say diet sodas and things like that, then if you're adding a lot of artificial chemicals to the water, I'm not sure there's a big difference between, you know, flavored water and a diet soda. My, fr my first grader is not on TikTok, but is asking me for flavor packets. To add it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. For me, the flavor packets are okay. It's when you get the syrup. That kind of makes me think of the consistency changing. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'm going to hard pass on that. <laughs> this weekend, make sure to watch 11 Alive this Sunday morning at 11 for a Sports Extra Braves pregame special ahead of Sunday's game. And then after the special, you can watch the Braves take on the Orioles right here on 11 Alive as part of NBC's Major League Baseball Sunday leadoff series. Chesley. All right. Thanks a lot. We're looking at uh, temperatures by noon, right around 67 degrees, but we're going to have cloudy skies out there. There may be a couple drops of rain as well. Uh, that will continue as we head toward the 4 o'clock hour, 71 degrees our afternoon high, so a little bit cooler thanks to the cloud cover and the threat for some rain. By 6 o'clock, temperatures will be right around 68 degrees. Uh, you're looking at just a few showers around. In fact, I think they'll last through the overnight going into tomorrow, and we'll hold on to it through next week. We leave you with some good news. It is official. The outcome we hoped for. The votes are now counted. Mr. Rich Toomey at Kelly Mill Elementary School was just named the 2023 Custodian of the Year. The kids love Mr. Rich. They're thrilled. So Mr. Rich wins a title, $10,000 in the school incoming, gets $5,000 in some cleaning and Rubbermaid supplies. Congratulations, Mr. Rich. Yeah. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Today's show is coming up next.